The man reputed to be the number one dealer of cocaine to the U.S. now is in the nation's most secure prison. Juan Ramon Mata was seized in Honduras yesterday and rushed to the federal penitentiary in Marion, Illinois, where he's awaiting formal charges. CNN's Charles Feldman has our report. When he arrived at New York's Kennedy Airport early Wednesday morning, Juan Ramon Mata looked like a man who didn't know what hit him. What hit him was a massive raid by Honduran police on his home in Honduras. From there, Mata was flown to the Dominican Republic, eventually on to New York via Puerto Rico, and is now at the federal prison at Marion, Illinois, this country's most secure federal prison. Officials say Mata is one of the world's most notorious cocaine traffickers, with ties to Mexican and Colombian drug cartels. He is also believed tied to the 1985 torture slaying of U.S. drug agent Enrique Camarena in Mexico. But in a TV interview conducted while he was in a Colombian prison in 1986, Mata scoffed at the notion. That's impossible, mister. Not even a child would think that. Therefore, I'm innocent. Mata's arrest was hailed by the U.S. State Department. We view this as a major successful step in our effort to stem the flow of illegal narcotics trafficking. Mata has been a difficult person to keep behind bars. He escaped a federal prison in Florida in 1971 and fled Colombia in 1986, reportedly by bribing guards with millions of dollars. Since then, he has been living in Honduras, which was recently challenged to do more about drug trafficking. One U.S. senator who is holding hearings on the problem says the cooperation by Honduras is welcome, but more is needed. I think all those involved in the narcotics, uh, uh, in the anti-trafficking effort, uh, are going to be very wary of uh, flashy beginnings which are not followed up uh, by significant amounts of real uh, reform and real enforcement. Mata came from humble beginnings, but by last year was suspected of shipping thousands of pounds of cocaine to Florida, where they were then seized. In third world countries, some people look up to people like Mata. In the case of uh, Mata Ballesteros and certainly several of the major violators that you see in Central and South America, they're becoming folk heroes. It is unclear at this time where Mata will go next, although Los Angeles is said to be a strong possibility. There are indictments against him in no fewer than three states so far. Charles Feldman, CNN, New York. Help from Honduras and the Dominican Republic in Mata's capture may have spurred on a new idea from the Reagan administration, a multinational force to fight the Colombian drug cartel. CNN has confirmed that administration officials are thinking about proposing the idea to other countries and that there's been talk of using military forces to help fight the war on drugs. The trouble with ties to Colombia's infamous Medellin cocaine cartel. Much mystery remains tonight about how and where he was captured, but it is known that he's being brought to the United States. You may recall that recently on this program, NBC's Brian Ross reported that Mata was being protected by the Hondurans, and apparently that so embarrassed them that they decided to get involved in his capture. As NBC's Richard Valeriani reports now, Mata is wanted in this country for murder. Members of an elite Honduran army unit known as the Cobras struck before dawn. They surrounded and searched Mata's luxurious, heavily guarded compound in Tegucigalpa and said they found a bag of cocaine. Mata's wife, Nancy, protested that the drug had been planted by the searchers. Mata himself was seized somewhere else, it's not clear where, and he's now being brought to this country by federal marshals. Nor is it clear how he was turned over to the U.S., since there's no extradition treaty with Honduras. American officials describe Mata as a major figure in the cocaine traffic between Colombia and the United States. They say the largest coke shipment ever seized in this country, 8,000 pounds in Miami last year and hollowed out furniture, came from Mata. His trademark white Mercedes is well known in Tegucigalpa, where he's lived since reportedly paying $2 million in bribes to get out of a Colombian jail in 1986. His personal worth is estimated at $2 billion. Mata is wanted in the U.S. in connection with the 1985 murder of American anti-drug agent Kiki Camarena in Mexico and he faces a number of drug charges as well. Because of Mata's links to high-ranking Honduran military officers, American officials say he had the run of the country and conducted his drug operations freely. But now, American law enforcement officials speculate that the Honduran military, stung by widespread reports of their involvement in drug dealing, went after Mata to show that there were no Noriegas in Honduras. Richard Valeriani, NBC News, New York.
And that is a reference, of course, to Panamanian strongman Manuel Noriega, who was heavily involved in drug trafficking as well. Today, National Security Advisor Colin Powell admitted that U.S. economic sanctions have not been enough to force Noriega out. Powell said the administration now is considering seizing tax payments made by U.S. businesses in Panama, as well as other political and military 